I was just fixing up my pants so I can show you the shirt that we're gonna be making. This is my Westchester Dolman top, and this is a free PDF pattern that I actually designed several years ago. A lot of you that have been following me for a long time probably have made one of these. If not, this is the perfect beginner project for stretch knits. We're gonna talk about fabrics. I'm gonna see how far I can get along uh, trying to put one of these together today. And uh, we've included links in the description box below to everything that you need to get your hands on if you wanna give this top a try. So if you are tuning in, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. If you are new to my channel, make sure that if you enjoy what you see here on our Whip Wednesday sessions, that you click the subscribe button, you give the video a thumbs up. If you're watching me on Facebook, make sure to share. Take a second to share it to your personal page. So if you have crafty friends or people who are looking to learn how to sew and start off with some easy to follow video tutorial based projects, they can check me out. All right, so I'm coming to you from my North Central Florida home studio here where uh, our property was frosted over this morning. So hopefully those of you that live further north are not doing uh, or don't have even colder weather. I'm going to pop in real quick to YouTube and see what my friends are saying. If you're watching us on Facebook, go ahead and like this post and remember to share it. Let me go here and make sure that it pops up for me. Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Hi everybody. Hey Carla. Hi Margie. Gail says hi from Tampa. Uh, how cold were you all this morning? We're just north of Gainesville here. Now, Gloria's tuning in from Arkansas. Hey, wow, Michelle from New Zealand. Hey there. All right, so this uh, is my Westchester Dolman top. If you've made one before, you know that the neckline, the neckline here on this one is slightly different. Every time I make one of these tops, I feel like I play with the neckline. And then um, we'll start talking a little bit about the pattern, but it's a free PDF download that's linked in the description box of this YouTube video. We also carry hard copy patterns. I am uh, a fan of cutting right into them, tracing it if there's not that many pieces. You all know me with my Jolie patterns. I love to trace those. This is a crafty Gemini pattern. So the only place you can get it is from us. So you can download the free PDF and kind of, you know, tape all those sheets together. If you're familiar with PDF sewing patterns, you know how that process goes. If you want a hard copy pattern that you can still trace out, it's so few pieces, very, very easy to do. All right, so the sizes that I included in this pattern are, they're basically women's sizes. There's not as many as like a Jolie pattern. Uh, it's just a free PDF download that includes sizes, uh, women's sizes, small, medium, large, and then extra large, 2XL and 3XL. So as far as the measurements go, the 3XL in my pattern uh, covers up to a 50 inch bust I'm trying to see what it is, a 43 inch waist and 50 inch hips. However, if you have ever signed up for any of my paid for stretch knit classes, you already know that you can get away with either sizing down or sizing up based on how much stretch the fabric has. So we'll talk a little bit about that as I get into uh, finishing cutting out my fabric pieces. Now this fabric, we have listed it for sale in the online shop and you can see the length. I have not adjusted the length of the pattern. I am someone who likes to wear the tops further down on my hips. So if you like the same thing and you usually have problems because you, you maybe you make tops and the, the, the shirts are super short, you'll see that even with a chunky hem on here, I designed it to fit longer. There is some slight shaping here on the waistline. So a lot of things that you can do. I also have a separate course called the Hack Pack. Uh, it's like a Westchester Dolman top hack pack where I show you how to adjust the neckline, how to make it higher, lower, v-neck, how to make it long sleeve, how to make it short sleeve, how to make it into a tunic dress. I think those were all the hacks. And so based off of the same free pattern, I teach those individual video courses all bundled up together so that you can use the same pattern to make all different kinds of tops. So let's take a moment right now. If you have made a Westchester Dolman top, tell me I've made one in the comments below, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, say I've made a Westchester Dolman top. All right, now the free pattern download, you can find it in my online shop. I link to it in YouTube. We'll put it in the chat here for you as well. It's super simple. It's just craftygemini.com with a slash and then Westchester Dolman top, okay? So that's that. The seam allowance is included. We use half of an inch seam allowances on this. So it's a quick make also if you have a serger and you wanna whip it up on a serger, you can do that. Now, even if you're not following along exactly today, or maybe I don't get through the whole shirt today while we're on Whip Wednesday, no big deal. I have seven free video tutorials that go through every step of making this top. So not only is the PDF free, but seven different videos. It's a full free video series that you can access where I walk you through each step. So just 
grab something to drink, and join me here working, and let's just start chit-chatting, answering some questions, and making them. Oh my gosh, I love to see this. Sally says, I've made several. Hey, Sally. Uh, Wendy in Australia says, I've made one. Heather says, she's made one. Carla says, I've made a lot of them. She has. <laughs> they look awesome. Now, the fabric that I'm using is a uh, Supima cotton rib knit. I'm going to show you another print that we have here. These are some holiday fabrics that I got, but really, I'm going to wear this one year round. Um, you can go to craftygemini.com slash shop, and the first three posts there, like products in the shop page, are three different fabrics. So one is like candy canes with little hearts. Uh, this is, doo -doo -doo, I think, mistletoe, jo uh, mistletoe joy. <laughs> um, having trouble pronouncing words today. And then we have another one that's like uh, Christmas bows or something. I think it has like mistletoe and some red and green bows on it. Anyways, Supima cotton is a type of cotton that's grown in the U.S. And it's considered like a premium cotton because it has a long staple. It allows it to be really stretchy, like really good and stretchy, strong. Um, so it will you know, hold up to the wear and tear of, of stretch knit garments. And then also um, color fastness. Usually we tend to go towards the polyester side of things because those colors don't tend to fade, right? Because it's a synthetic fabric. But here in these Supima cotton lycra blends, uh, they're 96% cotton, 4% lycra. So we get that really good stretch and stretch return, right? Because we don't just want the fabric to stretch out as we're wearing it. We want it to bounce back and keep its shape, okay? So these three prints that we have, I've put them at a discounted rate. So we sell them in half yard increments but you get continuous yardage. It just allows you to buy like half a yard or one and a half or two and a half yards. Uh, so you can do that, just make sure, right? Say if you're wanting to get four yards, it's half, half, half and half. So you're gonna wanna put in a quantity of four, okay? And then my team here will cut it up in continuous yardage for you, but at $5 per half yard, $10 a yard for this awesome, amazing, super stretchy and cute fabric. Okay, so this is the pattern sheet for the Westchester Dolman top. As far as pieces go, you're cutting out one front, one back, uh, the two bands for the sleeves, and then we end up at the end cutting out a neck band. The cool thing about this fabric, and that's kind of why I wanted to feature it for this pattern, is that because it's a rib knit, okay, and it stretches so much, we can use it for the bands and the neckline as well. Whereas uh, if you're in my uh, Jolly Jean PJ set course, you know that the pattern calls for a fabric that has a specific amount of stretch, right, for the main fabric, but then we use rib knits for the cuffs, the ankle cuffs of the pajama pants, and then also for the neckline. Here, you can see on the sample that I'm wearing, I've made everything with the same fabric because it has so much stretch. So there's no hemming at the sleeves, we attach a band to finish it off. The only part that we hem is down here. Super simple, okay? So let's go ahead and swap over to my over-the-shoulder camera angle. We'll talk a little bit about the fabric. I have the uh, sleeve bands to cut out, and then I'm gonna jump right in to start putting this together. All right, and you know what, y'all? I just realized I lied. I said the next time you saw me, I was gonna swap out to my new cutting mats. I promise for Friday, I will have. I have them literally on the other side of this table. I just have to clear everything off of this table to then replace them, so my bad. Okay, so this is my pattern piece. I obviously make them in different sizes and I trace off the pattern if I wanna do a hack and make it like long, uh, a little tunic dress or whatever. So this is just the traced out version for the size large. Now, if you watch the free video tutorials for this, you'll see that the pattern template that I use for my size, and I show you how to do this as well in case you have a similar body type, is that I cut out here you probably can't see it, but it says size large graded out to extra large at the hips. And so this is part of the video tutorial where I show you all this part that I traced off is a size large. And then coming into here, I grade out to an extra large. All right. So that's the size that I find works best for me. So uh, let's go ahead and grab this little piece. This is one of the prints. I ended up with fabric in my mouth. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is the candy cane love. Isn't that super cute? I'm definitely, this is the fabric that we're cutting out today that we're working with because I want to make myself a top like this. Oh my gosh, I love to see so many of you that have made the Westchester Dolman top already. Carla says she likes the bows. They're the cutest. All right, so let's see. Oh no, Janet says she's afraid of stretch fabrics. Well, stay with us, Janet. I'm going to walk you through. You're going to see how easy it is. And really, the part that kind of boggles everybody the most is kind of the anticipation of how is the fabric going to act 
once you grab it and you cut a piece out and you run it through the sewing machine, you immediately start to gain confidence. So I have a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel. I have paid for courses and I love stretch knit. So you'll find a lot of that content on my YouTube channel. I, uh, I definitely recommend that you check it out. Brenda Finley says that she's made a Westchester Dolman top. And then let's see. Uh, Amanda says it's very flattering. It makes the girls look good. I would have to agree. For somebody like me who has a short waist, so my bust, my full bust is here and my waist is literally up here, y'all. I need something to come into the waist like that. It's what I feel most comfortable wearing, even though it's like a little bit more snug, but I like more of the hourglass figure because then literally from here all the way to the ground is nothing but hips, okay? So, I mean, uh, hips is nothing but legs. Like I have super long legs and a really short torso. So accentuating the waistline for me is a plus. That's kind of why I designed this top to be like that. So I mentioned earlier, it does have the shaping in the waistline. All right, so here. Candy cane. I can see already that on this scrap piece, my selvage is up top here. So we know that perpendicular to the selvage is the degree of greatest stretch. Can we see this? I mean, look at me. I'm all the way over. Let me scoot over, guys. Thank you. Good. Now I can see where I'm at. Perfect. So this is my selvage. Perpendicular to the selvage. Look at this. Are you ready? Look, look at this. Is that not the most amazing stretch return. I mean, it literally jumps and bounces. Obsessed. Okay. So we are going to cut two of these sleeve bands and I have already copied over the markings. The stretch needs to be going in this direction. All right. So that means I'm going to position this like this because that's the degree of greatest stretch. And I think I'm actually going to move this camera over so that I'm more centered on this one. So if y'all bear with me, I think that's better. Yes. All right. So now we are going, we need two sleeves, right? We got two arms on the shirt. So we're going to fold this up onto itself. Easy peasy. And then let me see if this is even long enough. It's not. So I'm just going to keep scooting over till right here. It is. So this is the uh, lengthwise grain and then the stretch degree of greatest stretch needs to be going this way. I'm going to pop over here, grab a couple of my washers, my uh, rotary cutter. Say, say what? Question. Yes. Go for it. Yes. Did I not mention that? What is wrong with me today? Absolutely. This fabric would be amazing for the jolly jean PJs. Now, the only thing is, right, if you've watched the video lessons already, you know, we go through all those different videos talking about fabric stretch for those PJs and stuff. I believe that pattern calls for minimum 50% stretch in the, in both directions. So let's grab a little scrap piece of this just so I can visually show you along the, I'm just going to scoot this out the way. Along the crosswise grain, this goes over and beyond the minimum amount of stretch. So here's my selvage. So this way, if we pinch it and fold it, and if you're in my jean class, you know, if you're in that PJ class, you know exactly how to do this already because I show you step by step. I'm going to take the four inches and I'm going to pull. So watch this. 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150% stretch. So how is that going to affect our project? right? If the pattern calls for 50% minimum stretch and we're using a fabric that has 150% stretch, ding, ding, ding. Any one of my students care to chime in and let us know in the comments how that will affect our project. Now, if we need 50, I'll, I'll wait on the answer while I move on to the next point. Then along the lengthwise grain, uh, the pattern calls for the same 50% stretch. And so if we go this way, now it's parallel to the selvage and let's check the stretch here. I have my four inches, 25, and uh, I don't quite get to 50. So it's more like 40% stretch. So now how does that affect the pattern, right? So let me see if anybody has chimed in here. Joan, uh, I'll just answer a question real quick while I see. Oh, Lenore, you are the lucky winner with the correct answer. She says size down. So because of the excessive amount of crosswise stretch, you'll be able to size down and still have it be loose and comfy like the, uh, the PJ top at least is supposed to be. Remember that one has like two inches of positive ease. Whereas those of you that reached out to me to get help with your fabric in the course, because you're thinking, I don't like, uh, that the pants have a negative four inches, like four inches of negative ease. Guess what? If you cut out your same size, now you're going to be wearing more loose baggy pants, right? Because we have all the extra amount of crosswise stretch. So 
If you want to try one out, I would say, I mean, at this price for 10 bucks a yard for this fabric, amazing. If you want to try one out and make a sample to see like just how loose it was going to be, um, you can give that a go. But I think you can safely size down either one or two sizes, even though the lengthwise grain does not really hit the 50%. It's more than making up for it along the crosswise grain. And that's kind of why I tested out this top to see, to see how long it would be and if it was going to be significantly shorter. There is so much crosswise grain in this Supima Lycra con uh, fabric that it's plenty long. Like it didn't affect it much, especially 10% is not that much. And it more than makes up for it going this way. So yes, <laughs> in short, the answer is this fabric would be amazing for uh, the Jolly Jean pattern, uh, pajama pattern. Okay. So did that. Uh, I saw someone here was asking, where is the hack pack video? So the hack pack is a course that's bundled together with a bunch of different videos. And if you go to the page for where the Westchester Dolman top free video series is the hack pack bundle is listed at the top. Or you can also just do a Google search. If you type in like crafty Gemini, Westchester Dolman top hack pack, it'll pop right up for you. All right. So we put these two weights here. Let me get moving on this. I am going to, and you know what? I placed it on the fold. I don't need it to have it on the fold. So let me give myself a little gap down here uh, so that I can separate my pieces. And let me make sure that I can see myself in the screen. There. Okay. So I'm just going to cut long. And so remember how stretchy this fabric is. Oh, and another thing, as I listed the three different prints that we currently have for sale, like the three Supima cotton and uh, Lycra blends, I went ahead at the bottom of the description of each and included the stretch percentage of each, both lengthwise and crosswise grain. So you can see right there uh, what it is before you even order it or get it at home. Okay, so we have those two. And I usually don't even bother to cut out the neckband because if you watch my Westchester Dolman top free video series, you'll see that based on the neckline that I create, I show you how to measure with the curve runner with this Crafty Gemini curve runner tool. And um, we measure the neckline like that so that we can make basically a custom neck band to fit perfectly flat and smooth. So this one has a higher neckline. I think it's really pretty, super flattering, especially for those of us that don't like to have super low, low necklines. It's a way to hack it. Okay. All right. So yes. Okay. So we got the two sleeve bands. Now let's go ahead and grab the, f yes. Question. It does go to size three X. Okay. And if you make three X and you need a little more room, if you're working with one of these fabrics, we just talked about how much stretch it has. It's going to have, look at this. Wow. So plenty of stretch to give you more room in there just to stretch over the body. All right. So you can see this is for my size. So it's large up to here. And then I grade it out at the hips to a size extra large. And look at this at the bust. Say you have like a really large bust size. Don't think about going up in sizes just because you think, well, I need to accommodate for a larger bust. If you're working with a super stretchy fabric like this, I mean, look at this. Come on. It's a rib knit y'all. Don't worry about it. It'll fit. Okay. Garnet says, yay, great idea on the stretch um, help on the fabric. No problem. Great tool for the neckline measurement, Mary says. Uh, she's going to order one for her. It is the bomb. I have a tutorial showing you exactly how to use it in the Westchester Dolman top one as well. It's great for measuring arm's eye of different tops also. I always will measure before, like if I'm working on a pattern that has a satin sleeve, Sometimes you think, well, it's a pattern, right? If I cut this size and I cut this same size in the sleeve, they should fit. Sometimes you'll get patterns where the difference in the circumference of the arm's eye is like three and a half inches. I don't know about you, but I don't care how much easing I do. I am not going to squeeze in an extra three and a half inches of a woven fabric, especially. So once I see that, I'm like, er, ain't doing it. Or I switch to a knit or do something else with it before I get to the point where I'm actually sewing it and wanting to yank my hair out. Okay. Anyway. Let's go ahead with these two. So I cut a slightly different neckline on this. I don't know why, but like I'm obsessed with freehanding everything. So every time I make a Westchester Dolman top, I will cut out the back pattern piece and you can see it's a Dolman top. Okay. That means there are no separate sleeves. The whole front, this whole thing is one piece and the back is another whole piece. It's amazing. Super easy. Great beginner project. Okay. So I usually will cut out the back and then I just move the template. I use the same back template, put it on my fabric and I'll just like whoop, freehand the neckline. It's good and bad. Good because it allows me to kind of feel like I'm doing something slightly different, but bad because if I love it, then I don't even remember what I did. Like, you know, I can't like, it was two inches down and then like three quarters over and it came right. I just wing it, but you can do all that. Okay. 
Oh, Carla says the Curve Runner is also great for measuring crotch curves. Absolutely. Great tool. Anything where you need to measure something on a curve and a flat ruler is not going to cut it, you can use that. And we have that for sale, of course, in our online shop. We have the limited edition Crafty Gemini Curve Runners. It's super cute with the aqua see-through handle. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So let's start. So we have the front and the back literally the front and the back, y'all. If you wanted to make one of these and you have maybe some scrap stretch knits at home and you didn't want to do the sleeve bends or hem it or finish the neckline, like you literally could just put the two pieces together and then try it on and see, okay, do I need to size down? Do I need to size up? Easy, because it's just two pieces. So I'm going to match things up here at the shoulder seam. Let me grab my pin cushion that has my ballpoint pins. Of course, I leave stuff everywhere. Surprise! Uh, here they are. Okay, it's a good thing about having your own sewing room. Can't get mad at nobody else when you can't find your stuff. It was you. All right, so we're just gonna pin across the top. And to be honest, you could whip this up in the serger if you wanted to, which I often do. Let's do this. So imagine how much faster it would be on the serger. It's like here, under the arms, across the other shoulder, under the arms. Ta-da, you have a shirt. Okay. So this is another good one. Oh, I think I remember, this is how my brain works. I'm like working on something else. And then I think I remember seeing a question that was like, how much fabric do we need? So um, the pattern will tell you exactly how much you need for your size. I believe for my size with these kind of, this length of a sleeve plus the band and all that, I think I use like less than one and three quarter yards. So if you had two yards and you were making a size like mine, then you'd probably be good. The only reason you need that much, right, is because we don't have separate sleeve pattern pieces. So you need to have length for the whole length of the shirt, but then you also need to eat up width because the sleeve part of it is also cut, you know, right from the same chunk of fabric. So there's no pattern Tetris going on here. There's no separate sleeves to be working out. All right. And this is how simple the pattern is. I don't even have notches, okay? There are no notches. You just match at the beginning, match at the end, and stitch this sucker up. Now, I have not gone through on my little jukey here and worked out the settings for a zigzag stitch. And I just feel like that's going to eat up so much time. So let's see, because I might just do this with a straight stitch. Although, for a fabric that's super stretchy like this, I would recommend that you use some type of a narrow zigzag stitch. We'll see what I feel like doing in a second. I'm, ugh, it's almost 1.30 already, y'all. I can make this top, let's just say, when I'm not running my mouth in... On the serger, like 15, 14 minutes maybe. On a regular sewing machine and using a zigzag stitch, you know zigzag stitches take longer to stitch out than a straight stitch. So maybe like 25 minutes. But it is like nothing to whip one up. Like I made this one yesterday. My son was like, when did you make that? I'm like, right now. He's like, dang. <laughs> I'm the crafty Gemini. What you think this is? This is what I do for a living. Fast, fast. But I also am a teacher, right? And that's my thing is that I want to come up with projects and designs that allow you to have successful results right off the bat. The more things that you need to do that are super perfect, the more chances we have to set up our students for a hot mess, right? And then they get discouraged. They don't want to do it. So I'm just going to sew up one side right now. And uh, make sure that you're using a polyester thread here. Because oh, Let me move my thingy. I forgot about my sewing machine. I think that's there. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the polyester thread. Make sure that you're using polyester thread because, especially with a fabric that stretches this much, okay? We want it to hold up. But you know what another thing is? I can get away with, let me see, what stitch am I using? Let me go zero, zero. I can get away with a straight stitch on this one because this fabric has so much more stretch. What do we say it had, like 150% stretch or something wild like that? And it's in my size. I already know that it's going to fit me loose, looser, okay, because of all the crosswise grains. So whenever I can make something with stretch that's not going to be super snug on the body, then I know I can get away with um, using a, a straight stitch oftentimes, you know. But if you have a good a stretch stitch that you know on your machine and you use and, of course, test it on a scrap piece, then you can do that. Now, I'm trying to remember here that the seam allowance is... Um, I'm going to lengthen this stitch a little. The seam allowance is half an inch, so keep that in mind when you're lining up your fabric pieces. Which also, because it's half an inch, that's going to give you more room in there, right? If you're on the, on the larger end of the 3X and you need more room, if you were to bump up the, uh, the stretch amount in the fabric that you've chosen to use, 
you're gonna get more room there. And if you shrink down the seam allowance to say a quarter of an inch, which is plenty fine for a stretch knit garment, you can make that top significantly larger. Okay, so remember, there's no set hard fast rules, especially when we're working with stretchy fabrics, you can make it work for you. Okay, and this is what happens on a sewing machine that only goes 750 stitches per minute. Doo, doo, doo. Takes a little while. I'll ask here if we have any questions creeping in and I'll pop over and see this. Let's see. Oh no, Margie says her serger's at the shop. It didn't work right out the box. That is the worst, right? When you're super excited to get a new machine and ready to start using it and then you have issues, no good. I hope you get it fixed quick, Margie. Um, doo -doo -doo. My snips are probably at the sewing machine. Let me grab these other ones. Okay. Of course, especially with cotton fabrics, you'd want to take out your iron and give this sucker a good press. So I stitched across the top, shoulder seam, okay? From the, ne the end of the neckline, the shoulder seam all the way down the sleeve. And then here, I am going to... Let's flip it this way. Stitch down the arm, which is going to basically complete the sleeve and then come down the side of the shirt. Remember, it's a dolman, a dolman sleeve top, or excuse me, dolman top with a dolman sleeve, whatever. You know what I mean. And um, that means that the sleeve is part of the front bodice. But notice on this little 300 and something dollar jukey machine, I do have a ballpoint jersey needle in here. Hold up, let me say that first. This fabric is like a little bit lighter weight, so I'm using a 70-10 ballpoint jersey needle. Uh, you could use an 80-12 though, but I just feel like it has such a, a nice light hand. And at 96% Supima cotton and 4% uh, Lycra, it just has an amazing feel. Definitely a premium fabric. Oh, Clovis is tuning in. Hey, Miss Clovis. We are working on a Westchester Dome Top with some fun holiday fabrics. I was telling my husband, these are, you know, they're t-shirt knits, like a rib knit, but still, if we're gonna be staying home, if you are doing like Zoom family get-togethers for the holiday, why not have a cute top to wear with your leggings or jeans, you know? That's kind of like my uniform, if I have anything else to do that's not working from home and farm chores and cooking and cleaning, I'm usually wearing t-shirt, some type of cute shirt, you know, with jeans or jeggings. They're more comfy for me. All right. Ooh, Michelle says she's binding the neck with FOE. So for those that don't know, FOE is what we call a fold over elastic. So you can do that too. Totally. I've done that before a lot for like uh, tank tops that have like a neckline and then the arm openings. You can finish them off with that. I first started using FOE, I think, uh, with cloth diapers when my son was a baby. I made all his cloth diapers and I would finish off the leg openings with fold over elastic. All right. So Crafty Ferret Mom is saying, if you want to make the top for someone who is 5X, would the 3X work? So for something like that, I would definitely do what I said is jump on one of these rib knit fabrics since we've already talked about. And actually, I have a little sheet here. I thought I had it here. Let me see where I dropped it. So I included, remember I said in the description for each of the fabrics, I included the stretch percentage. I would probably go with the one that has the most crosswise stretch, which looks like to me it's the Christmas bows fabric. That one's going to have, it's almost 175% stretch along the crosswise grain. So that one, I mean, they're all kind of the same, like 125, 150, and another one is 175. So they're all three prints are super stretchy, but that one is going to be the one that's going to give you the most crosswise stretch. So it's going to be the easiest one to size up for two sizes off that 3x size okay but i think that that will be plenty because the fabric has so much stretch and it's all cotton machine washable dryable it's really great okay carlos says tell me how soft the fabric is girl this this is how soft it is <laughs> it's light and it's so so comfy y'all do you see me in this shirt a dream it's just like the perfect throw on top and you can dress it up or dress it down now Okay, and you know what? If you did the hack where you make it tunic length, then you wear it with some cute leggings and boots, a little scarf, one of the little funky Santa hats, and you're good to go, right? All right. Uh, Amanda says that's awesome stretch. It is. It is, but remember to keep... Look at me. I'm thinking the shirt is done. Not even close. Uh, let me go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So if I give you the visual, here you see. Hem all the way up the side to the sleeve. And yes, I went off a little bit right there. It ain't gonna matter. With this much stretch... 
one eighth, one fourth, even a half an inch is not going to be noticeable because the fabric has so, has so much stretch, y'all. And then this is across the top here, shoulder seam and sleeve. I'm going to repeat the exact same steps to the opposite side. And look how cute the shaping is there. I love it. Uh, my pins right here. Let's see if we have other questions coming in. Let me know if you have questions. Type them in the chat box so I can peek over here while I'm doing this. Joan says, I've been making these tops, made about five for my next one. I'm raising the neckline and she sews them up on her serger. Boom. Perfect. So this is one that I did. I think this neckline is literally only an inch to an inch and a half dropped from what the back neckline is. So remember the front and the back patterns are identical except for the neckline. So if you want one that has an even higher neckline where it's the same in the back and the front, just cut the back pattern piece twice. Yes. You have a question? Yes, you should wash your fabrics beforehand. Are y'all noticing I didn't pre-wash this because of the wrinkles in it? <laughs> no, but yes, you definitely want to pre-wash your fabrics when you're making them for clothes. In this case, since this top is for me, I know, oh, and this is another thing I forgot to mention about the Supima cotton. Because it's such a long staple cotton and it's premium cotton, the percentage of stretch on this is one of the lowest of all like different types of cotton out there. So it can only shrink about one to 2%, which is so minimal, not really noticeable. But yes, as far as the length goes, right? If you like it just at the length that it is and you haven't pre-washed it, it might just shrink up a little bit, but I mean one to 2%, what really is that? But yes, typically the rule of thumb is pre-wash all your fabrics, especially like for, for clothes for sure. Um, I oftentimes don't pre-wash if I'm using a polyester fabric. So say I'm making leggings with like a poly spandex, I won't pre-wash it. That polyester and that spandex is so synthetic and man-made, ain't nothing gonna shrink. Ain't no colors gonna feed, uh, uh, bleed or nothing, you know? So I won't do those. But if it has a cotton, a rayon, or any type of remotely uh, natural fiber in it, the bamboos, the hemp, the rayon spandex, yes, I absolutely pre-wash those. So pre-wash your fabric. The needle that I'm using is a size 7010 Schmetz ballpoint jersey needle. Schmetz are the ones that I prefer. It's the ones that we sell in the shop. It's the type of needles that we put in our kits. If you sign up for our courses and, and, and you purchase the kits, you know, that have all the stuff you need in it. All right. So now I'm going to, I'm going to stitch down this shoulder seam and then down the side, I'm just going to wing it like I normally would if I was not on camera with y'all, but you get it. Pin if you need to. Okay. All right. Hi, April, tuning in. What's up, girl? All right, half an inch seam along, so let me make sure I remember that. The trickiest part of being a quilter and someone who sews clothes is that. Like we in immediately and subconsciously go to a quarter inch seam. <laughs> Luckily, it's a smaller seam, so you can always go back and make the seam allowance bigger versus going big. You know, I feel like people that maybe go from garment sewing to quilting might be like quarter inch, and they do, because I've had students like that before. They freak out because they're thinking, quarter inch, how is that even going to hold the fabric? And you're like, oh, it does. It's plenty big. <laughs> All right. Susan says she's also made five of the Westchester Dolman top. She says she's raised the neckline. She says she has to bend over her patience. And then uh, she used nice long sleeves. They're beautiful. That is awesome. I love, love, love to hear that, y'all. Oop, did my thread break? Nope, we're still in. All right. So let me stitch this guy up. Uh, Charlene is asking if I want shorter sleeves, do I just cut the pattern up higher? Um, kind of yes and no. There are some pattern drafting tips that you need to keep in mind. I don't have a free tutorial on that, but the uh, short sleeve and long sleeve hack is one of the hacks that I include in the hack pack bundle that we sell. It's, there's like a whole course on it by itself. So that's something that, you know, we have available there, but there are some pattern drafting rules that you need to keep in mind other than just like hacking right at it. Okay, I'm coming down here. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see. All right, are y'all enjoying these Whip Wednesdays? I'm always, I love it because I also get to complete my projects while I'm sharing stuff with you all. And even though it's stuff that I've taught before in the past, there's video tutorials that I've already done on it. It's helpful because I know not everybody has been following me for years and years. So if you are coming across this live, whether it's the recording or you're live right now with us, um, definitely check out my YouTube channel. I literally have hundreds. And I feel like every time I do a Whip Wednesday, people are like, I had no idea you had that project. And I'm like, 
you probably um, won't know all the projects I have because I literally have like over 500 free YouTube tutorials on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. So I'm glad to be able to kind of breathe new life into these projects because they're still a very much uh, relevant right? And evergreen. So a lot of content on there for you all to watch. Now, if you're just tuning in, I am working on a Westchester Dolman top. Uh, this is one of my free patterns, a free sewing pattern I designed for y'all. It includes sizes women's size small through 3XL. And you can download a free PDF if you want the hard copy pattern. We do sell those as well. It's like the big sheet and the good um, printed paper. You know, it's not a tissue paper. So it's one that you can fold over many times. You can trace your pattern pieces off of it. That way you can... Um, preserve all the sizes, right? Instead of cutting into it and uh, and then um, only being able to make the size you cut out. Or if you're like my friend Carla, hi Carla, the PDF taping queen. Uh, if you love to put together PDF pages, then <laughs> just download the free PDF pattern from our website and you can um, tape the pages up for whatever size you need that way also. So notice I just hit the waistline area and you just kind of maneuver a little bit. Can y'all even see that? Yeah. So I just, you know, it's a slight curve. It's not super steep, but just make sure that you're maintaining your seam allowance all the way down, even along curved edges. So yeah, we're coming down to the bottom here and then we're going to prep our, um, the sleeve bands that I just cut earlier to attach them. Yes. Uh, for my size on the tunic top, so if we think about it, let me think. And the tunic top that I did in the hack pack bundle had um, the three quarter sleeves this way. So you'll have to do one and one. Uh, so you basically want to measure like from here down to how long you want the tunic to be. And you need that length twice of yardage. Okay, because you'll only be able to cut out one on the fold for the width of the fabric, even though the fabric is 58 to 60 inches wide, right? It's not wide enough to get two along the width of the fabric, if that makes sense. So seriously, I have like a thousand measuring tapes and when I need one, I can't find one. Do you have a measuring tape there? No? Oh yeah, right there. Throw me that one. This little cheap old thing. My clip and slide measuring tape is better, y'all. If you need a measuring tape to start making your own clothes, definitely check it out. I think most of them are still in the other studio because I used to hang them up on hooks on the wall so that I can grab them when I needed them. And this one has a knot in it, y'all. Wow. Wow, that's all I got to say about that. What did you do to this? <laughs> Who was measuring packages? Okay, so let's see. If I go from my shoulder-ish, you know, you can guesstimate. That way you can, if you make a sample tunic, then you can try it on and then adjust, look at yourself in the mirror, adjust the length, and then you can accommodate the hem there to, to determine like where exactly you want it to hit. But say I go down to my knee. Yeah, for me, it's gonna be like almost 34 inches from here all the way down. So you can make it out of two yards probably. You know, say 36 and 36, that's one yard will cut you one and the other yard will cut you the back and you'll still have a little bit left on the width to cut out the neck bands and the, and the sleeve bands. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me see because really look at the added length of this. Can we switch to the other camera shot real quick? I just want to go over this cause I know people will be able to, um, really use this pattern for a lot of different hacks. Okay. Look at this. I'm still going back. I'm still going back from here to a tunic is not that far. Okay. And I use less than one and three quarter yards y'all. So if you make it a tunic length, I mean what, add 10 inches to this, you know? So yeah, but that way you can see where the shaping is at the waist and then it goes really nice and long. So not a short top cause <laughs> I don't wear a short top. So I needed it long. It's the beauty of designing your own stuff, right? Okay. So back to here. So we have the front and the back done. Let's go ahead and prep our sleeve bands. We have two. Remember that this is a rib knit. So the neckline, the sleeve bands can all be done with the same fabric because it's a rib knit. And that's kind of why it has such a ridiculous amount of stretch. Look at that. All right, so we are going to fold these together like this. One, I'll put a pin here. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one. We're gonna stitch those there. Same exact thing. And then I'm gonna have to go grab my iron and set it up. Cause this part, I cannot do it without pressing this sucker flat. But yeah, we have a lot of tools. If you're wanting to get into garment sewing, 
I see Lenore saying, I love that clip and slide measuring tape. Uh, it's great for measuring kids that don't sit still. Agreed. Love them, love them, love them. It's easy to measure any, especially of the circumference measurements, right? The bust, waist, hips, because you can just clip it, take a big deep breath, let it loose, and then check it without having to be like, oh, messing with it and, you know, messing with the measurement itself. Okay. So this one, remember, we're still maintaining a half-inch seam allowance. That's what I allotted for in the design of the pattern. Okay, stitch my next one up. All right. Ooh, Tina says she also bought the clip and slide measuring tape. She says it's very good. It is. It's one of those things that like, if you have someone uh, that you know sews and you don't know what to get them, that's one of those tools. Not expensive, but very, very handy. Usually when we get orders for that, you'll see orders come in of like four and five. I can tell people are either putting them in <laughs> next to every machine in their different sewing spaces, giving them as gifts. It is a really, really handy tool. Okay. Joan is asking, what's the percentage of spandex in the fabric that I'm using? So the percentage of spandex, and this one has lycra, so that trademarked version of uh, spandex, right? So actual lycra is uh, 4%. So 96% cotton, 4% lycra. But because it is a rib knit, this is why you maybe will find other cotton fabric that features the same textile breakdown, like the same fiber content. You might find another fabric that's 96% cotton and 4% spandex, and it will not stretch as much as this. Because remember, this is a ribbed knit. It's even stretchier. If you hand knit, you know, when we make hats, we hand knit typically a some type of a brim at the bottom so that you can stretch that part on around the wider circumference of the head, and then the rest of the hat typically t is, tends to be smaller, right? Like the stockinette stitch will still stretch, but that ribbing is really, really the stretchiest part. So that's why this is a, uh, a ribbed knit. All right, let me grab my baby ironing board and let me plug up my iron real quick so that we can press uh, the sleeve bands and then I'll stitch those guys on. And then really at that point, I'll show you the shirt because it's almost done. This is the perfect experiment uh, project too. For those of you that are just beginners, y'all, the curls are popping. I'm just like, <laughs> every excuse to like, it just feels great. <laughs> it's amazing what a little red lipstick and washing your hair does uh, to your confidence. Hilarious. Okay, so let's do this. First, I'm gonna go ahead quickly and press the seam open on the side here just to reduce some bulk. Easy peasy. Let me grab my clapper. Y'all, legit, you need this. If you're making clothes, if you're hemming clothes, especially cottons and even polyester blends, double brush polys, lightweight knits, look at this. Do you see how flat? And that's not just the iron. If I hit it with that clapper, it cools it down almost instantly and sets it. So we'll do that too if I can get to the, uh, the hem part of the shirt. Just pop it in here. Let's see. Okay. So Elizabeth Burns is asking a quick question. She says, do you have a similar easy to make pattern for a man's t-shirt, long or short sleeve? So I don't, but uh, I did a free video sew along for the Jali Nico pattern. It's a, it's a paid for pattern. We, I think we, do we have some in stock still? We might. Um, and then I walk you through how to put it together in a free video series that I offered up on YouTube. Um, so you can watch that just to kind of familiarize yourself and then even from that, then decide if it's, you know, if it's a pattern that you think you wanna buy to try it out. But I walk you through every single step. I think there's three or four videos in that series. All right, so did y'all see what I did here? I just, I do this stuff without even thinking. I press the seam open and then I'm folding it in half this way. So I'm lining it up there and then I just kind of walk my fingers around so that everywhere that I look, I don't see wrong side of fabric. I just see right side, pretty side of fabric. So just roll it back on itself. And that's a good tip. When you're working with stretchy fabrics that are kind of like thinner, I just kind of scratch the fabric into position with my nail instead of trying to lift it and reposition, lift and reposition. Just kind of scratch it to bring that down so that the top raw edges are now matching. And I need to do it a little more here. And once I get it somewhat close, I carefully just place it down, hit that sucker with my iron and my tailor's clapper. Legit. We still have some Taylor's clapper in uh, Taylor's clappers in stock. Um, I can't remember how many, but I did just place another large order, so you can grab yours. Look at that, crispy! All right, let's do another one. So seam open first, and I'm not a huge um, 
press seam opener, <laughs> seam presser opener. Uh, but when we have half inch, inch seam allowance, it makes it a lot easier because you have more fabric to grab and to press open. So it just makes it easier. I mean, in this fabric, I mean, can y'all see, like, if you know about fabrics and you've played a lot with different types of fabrics, I think visually, just like this, even though you're not touching it, you can tell the light weight of this, not like a rayon spandex now. That's a little bit um, more advanced, right? Because it's just so light and airy. It still has good body to it because it is a cotton blend, but it's a rib knit that's just, it's super soft, y'all. And so we do have three different prints of these in stock. The one that I'm wearing, this one with the little candy cane and hearts, and then another one that has like little Christmas bows. I don't have a chunk of it, but I have it on the bolt there. All right, so we got those two. Let's scoot this aside. Now we need to line up the sleeve openings here so that one sleeve band and one sleeve opening are matched up with pretty sides touching. But raw edges also need to be touching. So if this is my sleeve, I'm going to slip this inside this way so that the raw edges of my sleeve band are lined up with the raw edges of the sleeve. Now, a quick tip, that doesn't matter too much, but I don't like to see, like I don't want the side seam of my sleeve band on the outside. Instead, I line it up so that it's on the inside here. So that's what we're gonna do, which the inside would be here where the curve is. So that means that this seam of the sleeve, I want to match up with the seam or the seam of my sleeve band. So there's my seam, place it inside, I'm gonna line that point up first. I mean, and there of course are steps that you can take like quartering this thing and making sure that the thing is where it needs to be quartered and evenly distribu distributed on the sleeve. It ain't that serious. This fabric is so stretchy, y'all. Just stretch it and make it fit. So like here, I'm not gonna grab a chunk from here and try to match it up to here. I'm going to let it sit where it wants to, right there, half and half, and right there. It's sitting super flat, I don't have any bubbles. I know that I'm just gonna grab this and pin it right there. That's all you gotta do. Save yourself the drama. There are rules for things, but there's also plenty of applications where we can just skip the rules. So that's one. And I'm just trying to think, yes, I did that right. <laughs> And then the next one, let's do that and then we'll stitch these up. We'll flip them out, give them a good press. So again, the sleeve uh, seam is this one. So that's the one I wanna match up to this. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be rocking my candy cane t-shirt. Super cute. So yes, kids pajamas, loungewear, loose jogger pants. Uh, even if you're doing the Jolly Jean pattern, pajama set pattern, your pants won't fit as tight as the rest of ours do because it has negative ease built into it. If you make it with this fabric, they'll be looser, more like loungy pants, super comfy. And then cotton with that lycra stretch return, easy to wash, machine washable. And we talked about that Supima cotton being like a premium, long staple, US grown cotton um, that helps the colors be more color fast and typical cottons. We all know, it don't matter how great it is, cotton is going to fade over time, right? So it helps to have a, a more high quality cotton fabric that will help you keep your colors brighter longer. Okay, so that's that, scoot this, bring my little maquinita here. Let's see. Oh, hi, Teresa, she says, I love your channel. Thanks for tuning in. If you are new here and you're watching us on YouTube live or in the recording, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. All right, so notice what I did. I popped off the accessory bin because I'm going to use this free arm to sew my sleeve band into place. I'm just gonna drape it over. And if you watch the free video series on making this Westchester Dolman top, remember this is a free PDF pattern that uh, I designed for y'all in women's sizes small through 3XL. If you watch the free PDF pattern, I show you, I believe, a different way to stitch this on so that if you have a machine that's inset, like in a table, or you have a big extension table and you can't expose the free arm, then I show you how to uh, stitch it from the inside instead of from the outside. All right, so let's start here. And then I just go little by little. Make sure that all my three edges are lined up somewhat so that at least the three edges, right, the doubled up folded edges of the sleeve band and then of the sleeve are um, aligned so that they're all gonna get caught in the seam allowance. Okay, I'm coming up on that bulkier part here. Let's see what I wanna do. I'm gonna send this seam allowance in that direction. Oh no, I forgot I was on this machine and I didn't have the needle in the down position. Note to self, 
If you're stitching anything where you'll need to stop to lift up your presser foot and expose kind of what you're doing and adjust yourself, make sure you stop with the needle down. Of course, all my other machines that are computerized and in my tables, I have them all set up to my default settings. No biggie. It just can be a little bit annoying to kind of lose your place if you start um, messing with the fabrics as that presser foot is up with no needle holding your spot. All right, I'm a little off here, but all three layers are still getting caught. So we're good. Okay, coming back around the beginning, I'm gonna overlap those stitches by a couple so that I don't even have to bother with um, back stitching. Okay, that's one. Let's do the other sleeve. And let's flip it out and press it because we are almost to two o'clock. So then after I'm done with this, all I'll have to do is attach my neckband and um, hem the bottom. So once I do that, I will for sure post a picture so you all can see what the finished thing is. And this is fun too, because on the Whip Wednesdays, if I don't finish the project, I literally, once I get off, I'll finish it because it's like five minutes left of work to do. You know what I mean? So I won't stop. No sense in leaving the project half done or more than half done in this case. Just go ahead and finish it off. Okay. Okay, needle in. Don't move from me. So line these up. This would make like, if you live in a warm climate like I do, although today has not been warm, um, a little tank top pajama dress. You know, a lot of us in Florida here just, we sleep with not like true actual pajamas, but just like a little tank dress or a sleep a night dress, you know? Super cute for kids too. This would be great. Yes, give me the question. Does this machine have enough power to sew on free motion quilting? So <clears throat> power wise, I would say yes. If you watch a, um, I have a full video review that I do on this machine and I share with you different types of projects that I've made on it. I think we do still have some of the machines in stock um, on our website too. So if you're looking for a holiday gift for yourself or for somebody else, that would be awesome. But the machine I stitched, I can't even remember. I think it was like six, eight layers of denim of like a black twill denim that I had on hand and I just kept folding folding it and stitching it and folding it and stitching it. So as far as bulk handling, yes. It also has the feature where you can drop your feed dogs. However, for free motion quilting, if you've ever done it before, you know that you really need to have something here. And let me move the, the, the machine here so you all can see. It really helps so that you um, maybe don't curse as much if you have more throat space here, okay? Because this is more like a beginner to kind of intermediate, but it's not designed for free motion quilting. You have the capabilities to do it for sure, but this here, I mean, even a baby quilt, folding it up and cramming it in here, yeah, you might say some not so pretty words trying to um, handle it all up in here. So capability wise, yes. And as far as just having like a quilt top, uh, the batting and the backing, absolutely. That can go through this, no problem. I've sewn very bulky stuff with cork fabric, uh, foam interfacings, uh, lined fabrics with fusible interfacing attached and you know webbing, like thick stuff. And it handles it just fine. But for me, the concern would be for using this as a free motion quilting machine would be this right here. It's, it's a tight space, okay? tighter than even a, a regular machine back here. As you can see why a lot of machine manufacturers are coming out with like these 12 inch throat space machines because you can do everything else that you need a sewing machine for but it also gives you that added um, throat space or harp space, whatever you wanna call it, to maneuver more of your quilts in there. All right, so here's my top. Let me flip this right side out. Now, the neckline has not been sewn. It has not been stabilized. You wanna be careful because on a fabric like this that has so much stretch, this would be a place where if you have it, you might wanna use a, um, like a stay tape to kind of stabilize that neckline right there without stretching it. So when the shirt is like this without anything here, I don't like to try it on because I'm a little bit rough with things and I'm just gonna like stretch it out. Although it does have that lycra content, it will bounce back, but it's just a raw cut edge that's on the bias. It's not the best plan. So instead you can straight stitch close to the edge here to stabilize it a little bit more and then carefully put it on before you attach the neckband, right? So, oh my gosh, my little candy cane shirt. I'm gonna look so cute. Look at that. Super cute print. Remember, we have these fabrics in stock right now in our shop. We sell them uh, by the half yard increments. In, so, you know, you gotta read the, the product description. Sometimes I get people that will order one. 
And a quantity of one, if they're sold in half yard increments, is just half a yard. You can't really do much. So if you want one yard, make sure you put in a quantity of two, right? Because it's half yard and another half yard. If you want two yards, put in a quantity of four. And so two yards is um, what I started off with to make this top. We talked about using two yards to make this even longer tunic length. Um, the same amount would be uh, would work for a tunic length with long sleeve because the sleeve is attached, so it's still coming out of the width of fabric, so that would work as well. If you're making the Jolly Jean PJ pattern, then you know that that pattern calls for three and a half yards so that you can make the matching set, the top and uh, the pants, the pajama pants. So be mindful of that. Of course, it's going to depend on the size that you're making, so just think about that. Okay, so two and a half, three yards, something like that depending on the size. Obviously, if you're making it for a kid, you'll be able to, you know, make more stuff out of it with less yardage. Do you have another question for me? Nope. Okay. So on the side here, because we have the shaping at the hip like that, I just like to run my hand in here to just push the seam all the way out and then kind of press it. Just to set it first, of course, you can go back in and um, use a ham and kind of curve it a little bit more. But you know me, this... I'm going to finish it and put it up on a hanger immediately, and then I'll probably wear it soon again. Okay, so I'm giving it a little press here. Good, good, good. So let's scoot this out the way. Of course, I'm not going to get to finish it, but you can see this is the shirt, y'all. Isn't that cute? Oh, my gosh. So, yes, this is my Westchester Dolman top. It's a free PDF pattern that you can download. I just have to hem it and attach my neckband, but you can see how the sleeves are done. So there was no hemming to be done on the sleeves because I use a, a simpler, more beginner-friendly technique of just attaching those bands. All right? So let's go ahead and switch to my front camera shot. I'll take some more questions. And then just remind y'all that in the description box, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, we've included links to everything. The free PDF pattern download, the free seven part video series that you can watch where I walk you through every single step from choosing fabrics to making it and all that. And then the Taylor's Clapper that I used today. We still have some in stock, I believe. The Curve Runner that I'm going to use in a minute to do my neckline. Um, I already have a video on this where I show you how to do that. So you get access to that, the clip and slide measuring tape, all the little things that you need. And the ballpoint pins that I use also to pin this up. Those are all things that we carry in the shop, so we link to that all in the description. Uh, Lisa's asking, do you have to use a stretch stitch? I'm like, <laughs> so cute. Um, Lisa's asking if uh, you need to use a stretch stitch. So I talked a little bit about this earlier. You don't have to use it if the shirt is going to fit you loose. If there's going to be a lot of stress on the seams, like if it's going to be like super snug, I mean, and some of you out there might think this is snug fitting. This is like loose for me. <laughs> I'm from Miami. What can I say? Um... So yeah, like you see how that's like loose. There's not that much stretch on these or stress on these seams. Um, this one I actually uh, pieced together on the serger, but then I hemmed it obviously because you can't hem on the serger. Um, I hemmed it on the regular sewing machine with a stretch stitch. So that was done there, and then the rest I put together on the serger just because I wanted to whip it up quick. So if it's going to fit snug meaning you're using a fabric that maybe doesn't have as much stretch as what we've been talking about here, then yes, absolutely use a narrow zigzag of some kind or stretch stitch. But if it's going to fit you loose, because the fabric has way more stretch and you're still cutting out your same size, then you can get away with a straight stitch. Well, that's just my experience. Okay. <laughs> Carla's laughing at me. I know. I'm like, um, okay, let's see what else. Do, do, do. Yes, Creative Genius Lyle is saying that's the issue I'm having with my quilting machine. It's a tight fit. It is. And if you really want to get into free motion quilting, you know, over time, yes, can you do it? You can. But it can be frustrating, right? You spend all this time on a beautiful quilt top. You're so excited. I know a lot of us feel like I want to make the quilt from beginning to end myself. And some people either don't have the budget for it to send it out to a long armor or they just don't want to send it out to a long armor. They want to quilt it themselves. It can be frustrating. Me personally, when I first made my first quilt, 13 years ago, um, I had a smaller machine than this one, and I fought with it to get it through. No matter how smoothed out and basted and everything, I had all these puckers on the back, and I think it was 12 years ago or something, 12, 13 years ago, and then when I met my husband, I was telling him, like, yo, I love quilting, but, like, I need a long arm. There's no way I'm ever going to push a quilt, and it was not even a big one. It was, like, 50 inches square. I was like, I'm never doing this again. Um, of course, I've gotten a lot better over the years on sit-down free motion as well, but it can be frustrating if you're starting off. So 
long arm for sure. Uh, if you can, obviously, but if not a machine with a bigger throat space makes your life easier. Okay. Let's see. JH is asking what machine can I use to sew garments, crafts, and my own denim jeans, a Juki. Um, so my Juki DX fives was the ones that we were using at the retreats last year. And I had retreats on quilting, bag making retreats and jeans making retreats. And we all use the same machines. Everybody made their projects. Uh, so yeah, a Juki. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, do you have the ribbing needed for the PJ sold in your online shop? Lenore's asking about the ribbing. So we have finished up with the PJ kits. So I had mentioned before that whatever we had left over the ribbing, we were going to list, um, uh, like to sell it by the yard. So we will be working to list that today or tomorrow. So just look out for that, Lenore. Um, you can check back the shop either late tonight or like tomorrow and see, um, when they're listed there. I got to kind of inventory what colors I have left and sell it by, by the half yard increments. All right. Charlotte is asking, does two and a half yards pieces come as a one yard piece? So I'm assuming the question you're asking is if I purchase two and a half yards, are you going to send it to me in one piece? Yes. So we sell it in half yard increments, but that's only so that you can determine the quantity as you're entering it to purchase it. So for example, if you want to order two and a half yards, you're going to put in a quantity of six, right? Because half a yard, half a yard, that's one yard. Half and half is two yards. Half is, is, is half a yard. No, you're going to put in five. <laughs> My math skills on point today. Um, so if you want two and a half yards, you're going to put in a quantity of five, okay? Because they're sold in half yard increments. But that way we know, hey, she ordered five. That means two and a half yards. So we just cut out a full continuous chunk of two and a half yards. Does that make sense? That's how a lot of sites are doing it because to sell half yards, they don't sell half yards you know? So that's kind of how we have to work around that. But just know, just add up how many half yards you need for your total yardage piece. And we will send it to you as a total yardage piece. Okay, great. That's a great question. Cause I get that a lot. Um, yes. Lisa says, don't forget. There's always hand quilting, which can be very rewarding. And I like to do everything. I'll do some sit down free motion quilting on a sewing machine. I have long arm machines so I can do it on that. And then I also hand quilt. It's like, it's not that it's one way that's better of doing things. It's that there are different ways and they all fulfill kind of like a different part. We were talking about this recently because of my knitted hats. If you saw my tutorial that I recently did on my YouTube channel on where I use like a knitting machine to make these Santa hat. Oh my gosh, hold on. I have to put this on because this outfit is super Santa. Okay. Feeling myself, feeling myself. So anyways, I did a tutorial on making these Santa hats on a knitting machine. And I've been seeing online that a lot of people are like hating on people who use a knitting machine. Like that's fake knitting. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. It's not real. I don't understand that argument. It's a different way of accomplishing the same thing, especially for people that are giving say charity hats, hats to the homeless in the cold months, right? You can crank it out on a knitting machine a lot faster than you can by hand. So why wouldn't you? So for somebody like me, like I have a knitting machine, but I still sit down at night to hand knit. It's different things. Okay. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So the same thing goes for quilting, right? Hand quilt, some of them machine quilt others. It just different things for different applications. All right. Bye crafty ferret mama. She says she's heading out for work. See you. Uh, thanks for everything and see you Friday. See you Friday as well. All right, everybody. So I think that's it for me. Make sure that you head on over to the online shop, craftygemini.com slash shop. Check out the little holiday prints. This fabric is there. They're all a rib knit. Remember in each product description, I included uh, the fiber content and the stretch along the lengthwise and the crosswise grain of each print. So you know, you know, whether it will work for the pattern that you have in mind. And then you can also make my Westchester dolman top, which is what I'm wearing here too. Too, this one that we partially made today. Uh, it's a free video series. You can download the free PDF or you can purchase the hard copy pattern from us. Everything is linked below and I hope that you'll check it out. Thanks for tuning in everybody. We will be here next Wednesday again. No, actually we will not. So let me take that time to tell you that I will not be here next Wednesday. So next Wednesday whip Wednesday is canceled. And then this Friday, in two days from now, we will be here live with a flash sale for you. And Fridays, I go live at 7 p.m. Eastern. So make sure that you check back both on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page and then also here on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. So this Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, we will be back with a flash sale. And then next Wednesday, Whip Wednesday is canceled. I'll be back with some more exciting news. All right. So everybody, enjoy the rest of your week until I see you again on Friday. And thanks for tuning in. Happy sewing, everybody. Bye.